Good evening. This is All India Radio. I'm Anubha Rohatki and with me is Nishit Kumar with the evening news. The headlines. Fitness ki dos aadha ghanta roz is the mantra to stay fit, says Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Prime Minister digitally releases age-appropriate fitness protocols on the first anniversary of Fit India Movement. Agriculture Minister Narendra Singh Tomar assures farm bills will bring revolutionary changes in the lives of farmers. India says China should refrain from making any attempts to unilaterally change the status quo at LEC. New Delhi says Pakistan has no locus standi to comment on India's internal affairs. COVID-19 recovery rate improved to 81.55%. And in ICL cricket, Kings XI Punjab face Royal Challengers Bangalore in Dubai. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has given a new mantra, fitness ki dose adha khanta rose. He has urged the people to apply this principle in letter and spirit to stay fit and healthy. He was interacting with fitness experts and influencers virtually on the first anniversary of the Fit India movement. Fitness ki dose adha ghanta roj. Is mantra mein sabhi ka swart, sabhi ka sukh chhipa hua hai. Phir chahe yog ho ya badminton ho, tennis ho ya football ho. Jo bhi aapko pasand hai, kam se kam 30 minute roj ki jiye. The nationwide online Fit India Dialogue was organized to celebrate the first anniversary of the Fit India movement. On the occasion, the Prime Minister also launched Fit India Age Appropriate Fitness Protocols. Mr. Modi held interactions with cricketer Virat Kohli, actor Milan Soman, footballer Afshan Ashik, among others, who shared their fitness experiences with him. The Prime Minister wished all countrymen good health and said that in one year, the Fit India movement has become the movement of people. आज का ये डिस्कशन हर आयु वर्ग के लिए और भिन्न भिन्न रुचि रखने वालों के लिए भी बहुत ही उपयोगी होगा फिट इंडिया मूवमेंट की फर्स्ट एनिवर्सरी पर मैं सभी देशवासियों के अच्छे स्वास्थ्य की कामना करता हूं एक साल के भीतर भीतर ये फिटनेस मूवमेंट मूवमेंट ऑफ पीपल भी बन चुका है और मूवमेंट ऑफ पॉजिटिविटी बन चुका है देश में हेल्थ और फिटनेस को लेकर निरंतर अवेयरनेस में बढ़ोतरी होती चली जा रही है और एक्टिवनेस भी बढ़ी है द प्राइम मिनिस्टर सेड योगा पॉस्चर एक्सरसाइज वॉकिंग रनिंग हेल्दी डाइट एंड स्विमिंग एक्टिविटीज आर नाउ बिकमिंग पार्ट ऑफ आर लाइफ ही सेड द फिट इंडिया मूवमेंट हैज डेमोन्स्ट्रेटेड इट्स इन्फ्लुएंस एंड रेलिवेंस ड्यूरिंग द कोविड नाइन्टीन पीरियड During the interaction, the Prime Minister hailed Afshan Ashik, a woman footballer from Jammu and Kashmir, as an inspiration for girls across the country. You have achieved the same way. It is also an inspiration for this country, but for the girls of Kashmir, you have become a very big inspiration. And you have also done your own experience. But for many children, you have inspired them to live in their lives. That's why you are the leader of the country. And I also believe that you will be the leader of the country. और मुझे विश्वास है कि आपको फॉलो करके देश भर में लड़कियां जरूर आगे आएगी और आगे तक जाएगी इन हर इंटरक्शन ऑफ शान सेट शी इज ग्रेटफुल फॉर दिस प्लेटफॉर्म एंड फील्स प्राउड टू बी रिप्रेजेंटिंग जम्मू एंड कश्मीर मुझे बहुत ही खुशी होती है कि मैं आप जम्मू एंड कश्मीर स्टेट को रिप्रेजेंट करती हूँ मैं मुंबई के पीफा क्लब में खेलती हूँ एज अ गोल कीपर मैं जब भी बाहर जाती हूँ तो लड़कियों को एक्सरसाइजेस करते हुए वॉक करते हुए या ग्राउंड में देखती हूँ तो मुझे बहुत ही खुशी होती है कि हमारी स्टेट की लड़कियां भी आगे आ रही है नॉट इवन जम्मू एंड कश्मीर ऑल ओवर कंट्री जितनी भी लड़कियां उनको आगे आना चाहिए ना कि पीछे रहना चाहिए हमें अपनी बात हर किसी के सामने रखनी चाहिए और खुद को फिट रखना चाहिए Speaking with Prime Minister Modi, Indian cricket team captain Virat Kohli shared his fitness mantra. जिस पीढ़ी में हम खेलना शुरू हुए और जो उस समय खेल की हमारी डिमांड्स थी, वो बहुत तेजी से बदली एक समय के बाद. और मुझे ये एक्सपीरियंस हुआ कि जो एक हमारा सिस्टम बन चुका था, हमारा एक रूटीन बन चुका था, वो हमारे खेल के डिमांड्स के लिए सही नहीं था और उसे बदलना जरूरी था तो मुझे वो एक समय पे खुद भी एक्सपीरियंस हुआ कि नहीं फिटनेस जो है वो प्रायोरिटी होनी चाहिए और खेल को अच्छा करने के लिए फिटनेस मैंने शुरू करी लेकिन आज अगर प्रैक्टिस मिस भी हो जाए तो मुझे इतना खराब नहीं लगता लेकिन अगर फिटनेस सेशन मेरा मिस हो जाए या एक्टिविटी मिस हो जाए तो मुझे ज्यादा खराब लगता है 
Speaking on the occasion, Minister of Youth Affairs and Sports Kiran Rijiju said, while launching the Fit India movement last year, the Prime Minister had emphasised that it should become the movement of people. Now, Fit India movement is truly becoming people's movement and in the past one year, many programmes were organised which have taken fitness to new heights. Agriculture and Farmer Welfare Minister Narendra Singh Tomar has said the farm bills passed in the Parliament will bring revolutionary changes in the lives of the country's farmers. Addressing media this evening, Mr. Tomar said through these bills, farmers will get more freedom and fair price for their produce, which will help them financially. He alleged that the Congress workers are trying to mislead the farmers in the entire country. बिल के जो प्रावधान हैं वो किसान हितैषी हैं जिनका विरोध करने की स्थिति में कोई भी राजनीतिक दल नहीं है लेकिन ये रिफॉर्म ये क्रांतिकारी परिवर्तन जो लंबे समय से अपेक्षित था उसको लाने में मोदी सरकार का संकल्प पूरा हुआ है इसलिए किसी को विरोध करना है तो वो देश भर में लोगों को गुमराह करके इसका विरोध कर रहे हैं the minister stressed that the minimum support price MSP is an administrative decision which is presently there and will remain in the future as well. He pointed out that the centre announced MSPs even before the rabi crops were sold. The minister said there is no provision to end Agricultural Produce Market Committee APMC. He added that the new bills just allow farmers to sell their produce outside APMCs, giving them a wide range of buyers. Mr. Tomer said farmers were forced to sell their produce in mandis so far. He said through these bills, farmers will now be able to sell the produce even outside the ambit of the mandi and even outside their state at any price they choose. हमने इस बिल के माध्यम से किसान को इस बात की स्वतंत्रता दी है कि जो मंडी प्रेमाइसेज राज्य सरकार का है उसकी परधि के बाहर जो भी एरिया है किसान का घर है किसान का खेत है वेयर हाउस है या और कोई स्थान जहां किसान ने अपने उत्पादन को रखा हुआ है उस स्थान से अब किसान किसी भी स्थान पर किसी भी व्यक्ति को अपना उत्पादन बेचने के लिए स्वतंत्र हो गया है इस विधेयक के माध्यम से ये अधिकार किसान को मिला है जो वर्षों से किसान की एक मांग चली आ रही थी the minister also stressed that there will be no deals related to the land of the farmer under these bills. The Farmers Produce Trade and Commerce Promotion and Facilitation Bill, the Farmers Empowerment and Protection Agreement on Price Assurance and Farm Services Bill were recently passed by both the Houses of Parliament. The Union Finance Ministry has granted permission to raise additional financial resources of 9,913 crore rupees to five states through open market borrowings. These states are Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Goa, Karnataka and Tripura. The permission has been accorded after these states successfully met the reform conditions of implementation of One Nation, One Russian Card system. The permission allows Karnataka to raise 4,509 crore rupees, whereas Andhra Pradesh can borrow 2,525 crore rupees. Telangana has been permitted to borrow 2,508 crore rupees, while Goa can raise 223 crore and Tripura 148 crore rupees. In view of the unprecedented pandemic, the central government had in May allowed additional borrowing limit up to 2% of the gross state domestic product to the states for the current financial year. This made an amount of up to 4,27,302 crore available to the states. Union government has said that more than 15 lakh loan applications have been received so far under the PM Street Vendors Atma Nirbhar Nidhi PM Swanidhi scheme. Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs in a statement said out of these more than 5.5 lakh loans have been sanctioned and about 2 lakh loans disbursed. The ministry is implementing the PM Swanidhi scheme to facilitate collateral free working capital loan to 50 lakh street vendors to restart their businesses post the COVID-19 lockdowns. The minister said with a view to expedite the loan sanctioning process and provide ease of operations to the lenders, it has been decided to push the applications directly to the bank branches which have been indicated by the vendors as the preferred lender or where the vendor holds a saving bank account in case preferred lender is not indicated. It said these measures are expected to accelerate the implementation of the PM Swanidhi scheme by the lending institutions in making the street vendors access the benefits of the scheme and to become Atma Nirbhar. India has said the way ahead on China and India border standoff is to refrain from making any attempts to unilaterally change the status quo, while both sides continue their discussions to achieve complete disengagement in all friction areas. 
Briefing media virtually this evening, External Affairs Ministry spokesperson Anurag Srivastava said the two sides have decided to have the next meeting of the senior commanders at the earliest. He said the next meeting of the working mechanism for consultation and coordination is also likely to take place soon. The sixth meeting of the senior commanders of India and China took place on the 21st of this month in Moldova. The two sides decided to strengthen the ground communication to avoid any further misunderstandings and misjudgments, stop sending more troops to the front line, refrain from unilaterally changing the situation on the ground and avoid taking any actions that may complicate the situation. The meeting took place in the backdrop of the meeting of the Defence Ministers of India and China in Moscow on 4th September and also the meeting of the two Foreign Ministers on 10th September. The two Foreign Ministers had reached an agreement that the two sides should continue the dialogue and quickly and comprehensively disengage in all the friction areas. The senior commanders met after a period of nearly 50 days. After the meeting, the two sides also issued a joint press release, which is the first joint press release after any senior commanders meeting. Mr. Srivastava said as such, it reflects the stated commitment of both sides to disengage along the LEC. He said disengagement is a complex process that requires redeployment of troops by each side towards their regular posts on their respective sides of the LEC. This would require mutually agreed reciprocal actions. The spokesperson said even as two sides work towards complete disengagement in all friction areas, it is at the same time also necessary to ensure stability on the ground. China's double speak has come to the fore once again. At a press conference in Beijing today, the Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson parried questions on the issue of permanent membership of the UN Security Council for India. Also at the same forum, he did not spell out any commitment on reforms of the Security Council sought by the G4 countries. Rather, he stated that there is enormous division and lack of a widespread consensus on the arrangements for reforms at the UNSE. The Chinese spokesperson said Beijing is willing to work with other UN members to seek what he called a package solution through dialogue and negotiation. India and other G4 countries have called for the start of the text-based negotiations without delay at a virtual meeting yesterday on the sidelines of the 75th session of the UN General Assembly. In a statement, they have lamented that there is no meaningful progress on the intergovernmental negotiations. G4 countries comprising India, Japan, Brazil and Germany have been demanding the expansion of the UN Security Council through substantive negotiations based on a single comprehensive text. All other four permanent members of the Security Council except China have categorically supported India's candidature for a permanent seat at the UN Security Council. India has said any action by Pakistan to alter the status of the militarily occupied so-called Gilgit Baltistan has no legal basis whatsoever and is totally void ab initio. Replying to a media query on statements by the Pakistani leadership and media reports in this regard, External Affairs Ministry spokesperson Anurag Srivastava said India's position has always been clear and consistent. Any action by Pakistan to alter the status of the militarily occupied so-called Gilgit Baltistan has no legal basis whatsoever and is totally void ab initio. Our position has always been clear and consistent. The entire territories of the Union Territory in Ladakh have been, are and would remain. The spokesperson said the entire territories of Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh have been and are an integral part of India and would remain so. He stated that Pakistan has no locus standi to comment on India's internal matters. On Jammu and Kashmir issue raised in the CICA and SART meeting by Pakistan, the spokesperson said it is very typical of Pakistan to use such fora to raise bilateral and contentious issues which is inconsistent with the principles and charter of such organizations and their meetings. He asked, what else can be expected of a country that indulges in cross-border terrorism as a part of its state policy? Responding to another query on Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan's remarks on Jammu and Kashmir, Mr. Shivasta said, the remarks constitute a gross interference in India's internal affairs and are completely unacceptable. He said Turkey should learn to respect the sovereignty of other nations and reflect on its own policies more deeply. The External Affairs Minister, Dr. S. Jayashankar, today participated in the special ministerial meeting of foreign ministers 
of the CICA or the Conference on Interaction and Confidence Building Measures in Asia. The Minister emphasized India's commitment to a pluralistic cooperative security order in Asia through CICA. In a series of tweets, Dr. Jayashankar said this is needed more than ever before. He also highlighted India's contributions to the global fight against COVID-19 and India's openness to do more, including with respect to vaccines. He spoke about the India-Central Asia Cooperation and the Indo-Pacific Oceans Initiative. Dr. Jayashankar also called for greater collective efforts to counter terrorism and its sponsors. He reaffirmed India's support for Afghan peace process that respects its national sovereignty and territorial integrity and preserves its democratic process. You are listening to the evening news on All India Radio. A reminder of the headlines before we move on. Fitness kiddos, Aadha Ghanta Rose is the mantra to stay fit, says Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Prime Minister digitally releases age-appropriate fitness protocols on the first anniversary of Fit India movement. Agriculture Minister Narendra Singh Tomar assures farm bills will bring revolutionary changes in the lives of farmers. India says China should refrain from making any attempts to unilaterally change the status quo at LAC. New Delhi says Pakistan has no local standby to comment on India's internal affairs. COVID-19 recovery rate improves to 81.55% and in IPL cricket, Kings 11 Punjab face Royal Challengers Bangalore in Dubai. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. All India Radio presents World News. News and views from across the globe. What happened? What is up next? The newsmakers and the highlights of the day. Every day at 10.20 p.m. in the night. On 100.1 FM, All India Radio. New COVID recoveries in India have exceeded new cases consecutively for the past six days. A total of 87,374 recoveries have been registered in the last 24 hours in the country. The number of new confirmed cases stands at 86,508. With this, the total number of recoveries have gone up to 46.7 lakh. The recovery rate has crossed 81.55%. As India records more recoveries than the new cases, the gap between recovered cases and active cases is continuously widening. The recovered cases exceed the active cases by more than 37 lakh. This has also ensured that the active caseload accounts for nearly 16.86% of the total positive cases. The recovery rate of COVID patients in Delhi stands at 86.09% today. The city recorded recovery of 3,509 patients in the last 24 hours, taking the total number of recovered patients till date to 2,24,375. With increased testing, the city has achieved the remarkable mark of conducting 1,45,079 corona tests per million of its population. A total of 3,834 new confirmed cases were reported in the national capital during the last 24 hours. With this, the total number of COVID cases in the city has reached 2,60,623. The Delhi government confirmed that 36 deaths have been reported in the last 24 hours, taking the toll to 5,123. The total number of active corona cases in the city now stands at 31,125. DMTK party leader Vijay Kant was admitted to a hospital in Chennai today for COVID-19 treatment. The medical bulletin issued by the hospital says he is stable and will be discharged in a few days. However, a statement issued by the party earlier said he visited the hospital for routine medical checkup, adding he had mild, mild symptoms of COVID-19. Meanwhile, the State Chief Minister E. Palaniswamy, Opposition DNK President M.K. Stalin and several other re leaders have wished Vijay Kant speedy recovery. Kerala reported the highest single-day COVID surge as it confirmed 6,324 new cases today. A report from our Tiruvananthapuram correspondent. 21 more deaths were also confirmed today due to COVID, taking the death toll in the state to 613. Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan said that the situation in the state is getting extremely serious. COVID treatment facilities are being enhanced in all districts. Meanwhile, 3,168 recoveries were also reported today. The total active COVID cases in Kerala rose to 45,919. Mayusha Po AR News from Tiruvannadapuram. 
In Manipur, 161 people, including 30 personnel from the Central Armed Police Force, tested COVID-19 positive in the last 24 hours, while 261 persons were discharged. The total number of positive cases in Manipur is 9,537, including 2,063 Central Security personnel. The total number of recovered cases is 7,369, while the active cases are 2,106. The recovery rate registered today is 77.26%. 62 people have lost their lives in the state. In the Union Territory of Puducherry, the number of COVID-19 positive cases has been increasing alarmingly. 668 more people tested positive and 6 persons died today. According to the status report released by the Health Department, so far, 24,895 people were infected by the virus, of which 19,311 were treated and discharged and 487 died, leaving 5,097 active cases. Environment Minister Prakash Javadekar today said the emergence of COVID-19 has emphasized the fact how unregulated exploitation of natural resources coupled with unsustainable food habits lead to disruption of systems that support human life. Participating in a ministerial roundtable dialogue on biodiversity beyond 2020, Mr. Javadekar urged the nations to join hands on the occasion of the start of the UN decade of action and delivery for sustainable development to put nature at the heart of post-COVID-19 recovery plan. He informed the roundtable that India, being a mega-biodiverse country, has a robust legal and institutional setup for biodiversity governance. Air India Express said Saudi Arabia has permitted outbound passenger flights to India under the Vande Bharat mission. On Tuesday, Saudi Arabia had banned flights to and from India amid a surge in coronavirus cases. Yesterday, Air India Express clarified it would not carry passengers from India to Saudi Arabia. Scheduled international passenger flights have been suspended in India since March 23rd due to the outbreak. However, special international flights have been operating between India and Saudi Arabia since May 6th under the Vande Bharat mission. A total of 15.42 lakh Indians have been repatriated through different modes of the Vande Bharat mission so far. Briefing media virtually this evening, External Affairs Ministry spokesperson Anurag Srivastava said 630 international flights and 142 feeder flights have been operated from 24 countries reaching 24 airports across India till the 22nd of this month. They have repatriated an estimated 1,24,000 people. The phase 6 of the mission is currently operational and will go on till the 30th of this month. The Air Suvidha digital platform has been made available for all arriving international passengers since the 8th of August. This platform allows for exemption from institutional quarantine for incoming passengers of the Vande Bharat flight. This service has been made available in response to a long-pending demand of passengers for seeking exemption from the institutional quarantine on the basis of their RT-PCR report. It is held to reduce passenger processing time on arrival. In Manipur, three sitting MLAs and two ex-MLAs have been inducted as Ministers of State in the BJP-led coalition state government today. Manipur Governor Dr. Najma Hektullah administered the oath of office and secrecy to three MLAs, S. Rajan, T. Satyabrata, Bungzang, Valte and two MLAs, two ex-MLAs, O. Henry and O. Lukhoi, late evening at the Raj Bhavan. The three newly inducted MLAs are BJP members, while the remaining ex-MLAs were elected on the Congress ticket in the last election and resigned from the party as well as from the membership of the Assembly recently. O. Henry is the nephew of O. Ibobi, the former Chief Minister of Manipur and leader of Congress Legislative Party. More from our correspondent. Presently, 13 seats out of the 60 members of Manipur Assembly House are vacant and a by poll for some seats is expected in a few months. Therefore, the induction of new faces in the Chief Minister and Biren Singh-led state government could be seen as preparedness for electioneering. Manipur Chief Minister N. Biren Singh was in New Delhi on Monday accompanied by Manipur BJP Chief Professor S. Dikendra and met Central BJP leaders including National President J.P. Nadda, National General Secretary B.L. Santos and Ram Madhav. Later, he returned to Imphal along with National Vice President and Central Observer Bijanta Panda and initiated the induction of new ministers in his 12-member cabinet. This is J.J. Thoksom from Imphal for AIR News. 
In Karnataka, the leader of the opposition, Siddharamaiya, today moved a no-confidence notice against the B.S. Yedurappa-led BJP government in the Legislative Assembly. Speaker Visveshwar Hegre Kageri, who admitted the notice, said that the time and date for discussion on the notice will be provided by Saturday. Revenue Minister R. Ashoka, who objected to the no-confidence motion, said the BJP was confident of proving majority. The monsoon session of the Legislative Assembly will conclude on Saturday. More from our correspondent. Revenue Minister R. Ashok has termed the motion as a political gimmick as he said they have the numbers. However, Congress leader D.K. Shukumar said that there is infighting in BJP and anything could happen. 23 Congress MLAs have signed the notice given by Sidramaya today. JDS remains neutral. The Yadirappa government is one year and four months old and has 116 MLAs and the support of an independent. There are four seats vacant in the House of 225. Hence, BJP has the numbers on their side as the halfway mark is 112. Since the session is concluding on Saturday, it has to be seen how the issue will turn out on that day. Sudhindra, AIR News, Bengaluru. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will virtually inaugurate the Vashrik Bharatiya Vaigyanik Weibo Summit scheduled to be held on the 2nd of October this year. Weibo Summit is a collaborative initiative by the science and technology and academic organizations of the country to enable deliberations on thought process, practices and research and development culture with a problem-solving approach for well-defined objectives. President Ramnath Kovind and Prime Minister Narendra Modi have condoled the passing away of renowned nuclear scientist Dr. Shekhar Basu. In his message, President Kovin said the demise of veteran scientist Dr. Basu is a huge loss to the nation. He said the scientist, a former chairman of Atomic Energy Commission, was a stalwart of nuclear science research and immensely contributed to nuclear powered submarine INS Aryan. The President extended his condolences to the bereaved families and friends. Prime Minister Modi said he joins the Atomic Energy Fraternity in grieving for Dr. Basu, who played a key role in establishing India as a lead country in nuclear science and engineering. The 51st edition of the International Film Festival of India, IFI, will be held from the 16th to 24th January next year in Goa. Earlier, it was scheduled to be held from 20th to 28th November this year. The postponement follows discussion between Information and Broadcasting Minister Prakash Javadekar and Goa Chief Minister Dr. Pramod Savant. It has also been jointly decided to hold the festival on new dates as per the International Film Festival guidelines and protocols. The festival will be conducted in a virtual and physical format. All COVID-related protocols will be strictly enforced as per the festivals convened recently in the International Film Festival circuit. Former Australian batsman Dean Jones died of cardiac arrest in a Mumbai hotel today. The 59-year-old cricketer was part of the 1987 World Cup winning team. He played 52 tests and 164 ODIs for Australia. He was one of the great ambassadors of the game, associating himself with cricket development across South Asia. He was passionate about discovering new talent and nurturing young cricketers. He was in Mumbai with the commentary team for the Indian Premier League. At the IPL 2020, Kings XI Punjab were 132 for 3 in 16 overs in their ongoing match with Royal Challengers Bangalore at the Dubai International Stadium in the UAE when reports last came in. Earlier, RCB captain Virat Kohli won the toss and elected to field. Now let us take a look at the weather forecast for tomorrow. The national capital Delhi will have a partly cloudy sky. It will have a minimum temperature of 26 degrees Celsius and maximum of 38 degrees. In Mumbai, there will be a generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. Chennai will have partly cloudy sky. On to the north, the, in the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir, the minimum temperature will be 24 degrees Celsius in Jammu, while the maximum will be around 37 degrees. The city will have a mainly clear sky. In Srinagar, Ladakh and Gilgit, there will be mainly clear sky becoming partly cloudy towards afternoon or evening. In Ladakh, the temperature will hover between 11 and 24 degrees Celsius. In Gilgit, the minimum temperature will be 12 degrees 12 degree Celsius and maximum 34. In Muzaffarabad, there will be a mainly clear sky and temperature will hover between 16 and 34 degrees Celsius. And now before we close the headlines once again. Fitness ki dos adha ghanta roast is the new mantra to stay fit, says Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Prime Minister digitally re releases age-appropriate fitness protocols on the first anniversary of Fit India Movement. Agriculture Minister Narendra Singh Tomar assures farm bills will bring revolutionary changes in the lives of farmers. 
India says China should refrain from making any attempt to unilaterally change the status quo at LEC. New Delhi says Pakistan has no local standard to comment on India's internal affairs. COVID-19 recovery rate improves to 81.55%. And in IPL cricket, Kings XI Punjab face Royal Challengers Bangalore in Dubai. For details of these stories and more, log on to our website www.newsonair.com and News on Air app. And with that, we end the evening news. Good night.